Hmm. How much can I take? Why am I taking this medication? And do I have to take it now? We're going to answer those kind of questions in this video today as we talk about the patient rights around medication administration. It's pretty cool to know that we're already using the rights to medication administration in our own house. We don't even really think about it. So I want to just break them down for you today just to show you how simple they are to implement. They don't have to cause a lot of stress for you, okay? But I know when you're going in through nursing studies, we really harp on this for good reason and you have to like have it at the forefront of your brain. But I'm promising you, you're already doing probably 80% of them. So let's just put some words into our actions here. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and on this channel we do everything nursing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below so that you get the next video when it's released. Now when it comes to medication rights, we use them all the time in our daily routine, but when it comes to nursing with a patient, we need to make sure we're paying attention to these with a little bit more detail. Number one is the right person. Who is supposed to get this medication? Basically. Now in the hospital that can become complicated when you have two people who have the same name or names that sound similar. We have to pay a little bit more attention and be more intentional with our actions. And so that is why we have the two person or two patient identification. We can come in, we look at their, their wristband, we ask them their name, we ask them their birthday to verify that we have the correct person. The next thing we want to look at is the right drug. What are we giving to this person? And so I wanted to make sure that I did have my vitamin D this morning and I didn't grab, say, the turmeric because this is a very different, um, this has a very different use, okay? And I also made sure I didn't grab the Advil because I don't have any inflammation right now and that's not what I'm looking for. I was looking for vitamin D. So I made sure I had the right drug and you identify it by its label. Now there are generic and brand names that we talk about in nursing and you want to know the difference between the two. Now in healthcare, there are some things to consider when it comes to identifying the right drug because we do have drugs that sound alike and look alike. And so there are very intentional interventions to help you identify whether or not you have the correct drug. So one of them is diphenhydramine and dimenhydrinate. That one seems to get people a lot, but you'll see that tall man lettering is one of those things. So that means that the, the last, the first or the last section of the word will be in all caps to highlight your attention to the fact that this drug is one of those that sounds like and looks like another. So to help you focus on that particular name. Now it goes along with the right drug is the right reason. Why is this patient taking this drug? I wouldn't give vitamin D to somebody who's looking to treat anemia because it's not going to affect red blood cell production. Now I would consider giving vitamin D to somebody who has osteoporosis. And so we're looking for diagnoses that match the drug to make sure that it makes sense. It's one of the critical things I do with my students is to make sure they really understand, well, okay, so they have vitamin D, what is it for? And if they tell me bone health, but there's no diagnosis of anything to do with bones in the patient's chart, then I asked them to dig a little deeper because vitamin D can be used for multiple reasons. And that's one of the, the great things about our drugs is that understanding what they're being used for helps you with the rest of the rights as we get down through follow-up, documentation, and the intervention effectiveness. Just as an aside, one of the most common drugs that nurses struggle with is aspirin. Why is your patient on aspirin? Many people will tell me because they have a headache or inflammation, but they will have a glaring history of cardiovascular problems. So I will encourage you all, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, to consider aspirin for its antiplatelet properties. All right more so than its anti-inflammatory properties when you're dealing with the population that has a cardiovascular history. So there's a hot tip for you. That is a big one. All right, so now we have the right person, we have the right drug, do we have the right dose? We need to do some research to make sure that that is correct. Now, sometimes a physician will order a dose that is outside the norms in our nursing drug guide. Have a quick conversation with them to make sure that this was not done in error. Oftentimes the research that comes out 
is faster than the drug guides can update. And then the doctors will be aware of these changes and they can implement them faster with greater therapeutic effect. Other times they've made a mistake and we need to have that conversation to ensure that we are not under or overdosing our patients. With the right dose comes the right frequency. How often are they gonna get this medication? Now for the vitamin D, I noted it's only once a day, so I'm not gonna take it at lunch and at supper and before bed. That would be an overdosing. The right dose and the right frequency is based out of the information that is gathered through our pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, which is a topic broader than this video, but you can watch that information here. I'll pop up a video for you so you can look at that after. Now, when it comes to our PRN medications, those are the ones that we take as needed, not every four hours, but only if you need it at that four hour interval, as an example, then we need to be checking to see when was it given last. That's the first thing you need to, to check, especially if you're coming in on the morning shift and your night shift has already taken their medication administration records and filed them away. You're gonna to wanna to know that information because if that patient just had their medication at six in the morning, and you go in at eight in the morning and they're complaining and writhing in pain and you give a PRN dose and it's sooner than they should have had it, that's a medication error. So we need to be looking at when did they last have it? When can they reasonably expect to get it again? Now with that, if their pain is not being managed with the current prescription drug and dose and frequency, we need to have a conversation with the physician because we want to increase or change that medication to help the patient. Same thing is when you go home with your medication. Teaching your patients that a PRN medication is not a have to drug, but it's a good to have drug if you need it. And what would be the qualifying factors as to when you need it? We don't ever want our patients to be sitting at home, white knuckling it through pain, trying to just get through. We also don't want our patients taking it every four hours if they don't need it. And so we wanna make sure we educate our patients on what a PRN medication is. All right, the next is the right route. How are we giving this medication? If it's orally, does it need to be crushed? Can it be cut? Can it be mixed with food? Does it have to be swallowed whole? Is it a capsule? If it's being given intramuscularly, how much is this dose? How, which muscle sites can I choose? If we're doing it intravenously, how can I mix it up? How long does it infuse? There's a lot of different things to understand when we pick and understand the route. And you don't wanna put a medication down the throat if it's meant to go up the bum. They work a little differently and their site of action is kind of important if you know what I'm saying, okay? Next, we have the right time. Some medications work best when they're given in the morning hours, the early morning hours. Now, this is a circadian rhythm thing too, right? So if you have a night shift worker, their morning might be 4 p.m. So don't get too stuck on that piece because there is some flexibility. However, so for example, if we're giving a diuretic, we don't wanna give it at 8 p.m. if they're gonna to go to bed right away because they're gonna be up peeing all night, right? So what would be the best time to give this medication considering its intended effect and how it works in the body? Now there's also the right to refuse and our patients need to be educated about this as well. You do not have to take a medication if you don't feel like it's doing the right thing, if you don't understand what it's doing, and you don't know why it's been prescribed. Make sure our patients understand all of those pieces so that they can make an informed choice should they refuse that intervention. And last is the right documentation and the right follow-ups. In healthcare, you're gonna be noting the exact time you gave it and the route if it's an injection, so left arm, right arm, those kind of things, and signing off so that your initials are there to identify who gave that medication. Now the right follow-up is something I find is often missing. We wanna be noting in our daily agenda, if I gave a medication at eight, and its onset is about 30 minutes, and its peak is an hour, I wanna come back in an hour to see, okay, where are we at? Did we actually make a difference in terms of your pain or your nausea? The inflammation, is it going down? The redness, is it changing? But also there might be labs you need to order, or perhaps you're gonna do a blood pressure or a pulse check. What is it that we're looking to change? We need to measure that afterwards, and so we're gonna follow up and then document that follow up. Thanks for watching, have a great day guys. Subscribe, let me know that you have liked this video when you subscribe, that's how I know. Like it, comment, and share it. I have a dream to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, and I'm gonna need you to help me get there. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notification when the next video comes out, 
and share this with your friends, your nursing friends, your family friends who you think will benefit from the content in this video so that they can also subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know what you think. Is this new information? Did I give you something to think about that you hadn't thought about before? And you can also share ideas for future videos that you would like to see. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Make it a fabulous day. Hey, I know you're probably not ready to get off your phone or go back to work just yet, or maybe even turn the lights off to go to sleep. So why don't you spend a little bit more time here watching another video?